Shalom, 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 and praise the name of the living God. My name is Pastor Grace Kikuvi from Rebuilding Broken Walls Ministry. I thank God so much for this morning. It's a privilege that God has given me by his grace to record this message and share it out with you. I want to believe that you will not be disappointed. But through this message, God is going to meet you at your point of need. Should you want to get in touch with us, you can call us uh, Kenya, 0111-734-821. That is Kenya, 0111-734-821. Seven three four eight two one. Our email address is Rebuild Broken Walls, Rebuild Broken Walls, one word at gmail dot com. Thank you so much, and let the Lord bless you richly as you listen to this audio message. You can also get us on Facebook and YouTube, Rebuilding Broken Walls. Pastor Grace Kikuvi. Now, our message today is God's power manifested in weakness. God's power manifested in weakness. Now, you are not called to salvation because you qualified. That is very important. You did not qualify for salvation. Neither do you qualify to serve God. You cannot meet God's standard to, to qualify you to be part of his service. Now, I want to persuade you that it's not about you, but it's about availing yourself to be used by God. Now, our key scripture is 1 Corinthians 1, 26-29. For you see your calling, brethren, that many of you were wise according to the human flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the best things of the world. And the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing, the things that are. That no flesh should glory in his presence. I like this. This reminds us that we did not qualify. We did not qualify according to God's standard. I just want to give you this example. Now, in selecting a team... The criteria used often include a person's ability, a person's status, a person's history of success, because you want to come up with a strong team. This is the world's measure. Now, the world's measure of success is different from God. God does not require intelligence. He does not require ability. He does not in, uh, require power or status to use you. You can read Ephesians 2, verse 8 to 9, that for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Many times, some of us feel unqualified. When you are asked to do something, the first thing that comes into your mind is that I am unqualified. So you have an excuse not to take up the task. Some of us feel unloved. Some of us feel hopeless. And this has become a big hindrance to serving the Lord. Now, some of us feel, no, I'm not good enough. I'm not important. So I cannot take the challenge. I cannot take the responsibility. 
Now you end up not doing what God is asking you to do. Those excuses have become a stronghold. Now we shall see the circumstances which God has called his people. When I talk about calling, I'm talking about drawing people to himself. God's calling means drawing people out to himself. Not any has intellectual, philosophic, so philosophical. We have no class. We have no political uh, connection. We are not elite. But nonetheless, God has chosen you out of the world. God has chosen from the world what seem foolish, what seem weak, what seem rejected, what seem despised, what seem helpless, to put to shame the wise and powerful, to show them how temporary and insignificant their achievements are. In his grace, he has showed his mercy on the weak. He has showed his mercy on you. He has showed his mercy on your weakness. He has shown his mercy because he wants to use you and make you strong. He wants to use you and make you wise in the eyes of the wise in the world. I want to give you an example. Just want to go through some a few examples of God's choice. There are so many wonderful stories of unqualified people that God used for great tasks. We want to look at the choice of disciples, number one. Andrew, Peter, James, and John were fishermen, mere fishermen, men who are not really important in the society. That is what God picked for his service. Now, when it comes to Philip, James, and Judas, of course, not Judas Iscariot, they were trade men. They were just businessmen. And when it came to Matthew, he was a tax collector, despised by the Jews because he exhort, is extorted money from them. This is God's choice. Look at the kind of people he picked from. Others we want to look at is Mary Magdalene. She was cleansed from seven demons. And the Bible says she financially aided the ministry of Jesus. That is Luke 8, 1 to 3, Luke 24, verse 10. Then there was this young man who was, who was amongst the crusade, Jesus' crusade. Let me call it crusade. And when they were looking for food, they found a young boy who had only two fish and five loaves. John 6, verse 9. And that food, or whatever he had in his hand, was multiplied. And people ate until there was a remain. Again, I want to look at David, the shepherd boy, who was anointed at 15 years, 1 Samuel 16, 13. He was just a shepherd boy. His father did not even see any importance of him because when he was told to bring out his children, he did not count David as any of them. But David became the great, one of the greatest kings in Israel. I want us also to look at Abraham from a pagan family. Abraham worked in his father's shop. Abraham came from an important trade center which possessed great wealth. He was born from a big pagan family, yet God used him. Brethren, you have no excuse not to serve God. You have no excuse not to answer to the call of salvation. Again, we want to look at Luke, the physician, Colossians 4.14. Luke was a follower of Christ, but Luke was learned. He was a physician. We also want to look at Saul, who was a Pharisee. 
Of course, his name later, he was renamed to Paul. He was a Pharisee, Acts 23, 6. From Saul to Paul. Look at the great works which Paul did and the great books, his contribution in the New Testament. Again, we also want to look at Cornelius, the Roman centurion, a great man, a man of respect in the Roman uh, Empire. Acts 10, God used him. Do you have any reason for not accepting God's service? What I want you to know is that God's qualification for service is not man. God qualifies and gives tools and resources to serve and overcome. No matter your background, it is God who qualifies you. So you cannot refuse to serve him. Another point you need to know is that God is not interested in your past. The past does not matter to God. Look at the people, I've, the examples I've just shown you. The past does not matter to God. When he calls you, he makes you new. The old is gone and the new has come. Paul, who persecuted the church, hated Christians. But look at the way God used him mightily. Acts 8 verse 3. Another point you need to know is that God uses every circumst circumstance of our lives for his glory. Look at the story of Joseph in Genesis 39 verse 2. But the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Humble beginning. Look at what uh, Joseph went through. Another point you need to know is that God uses those who are willing and available. Are you willing, number one, as he calls you, are you willing to say, yes, I am here, my Lord? And are you available? Very, very important. Number Another point is that God does not need us to be capable. He just needs us to be available. Not capable, but available. Then he starts a work in you. He starts constructing you to be what he wants you to be. He uses the broken vessels. To be usable. Brokenness is what God wants. That weakness whereby you are so humble, you are so broken, you are willing, you are available to be used by God. God works in our weakness, not in our strength. Remember that God has called you out of so many because he wants to make you strong. He wants to make something out of your weakness. It's only that you have to permit him to do it. Because when you are weak, you feel inadequate and you are willing to surrender to God. Another point is that it is never too late to discover your purpose. Moses was 80 years old when he delivered the children of Israel from bondage. Abraham was a hundred years when he became, he became the father of uh, Isaac. Noah was 500 years old when he started building the ark. All of us have something God can use. Moses had a staff. David has a slingshot. The young boy had two fish and five loaves. The question is, what do you have? for God to use. It is important for you to know that God's plan does not rely on our greatness, but rather it's about him. It's all about him. I want you to stop giving excuses for not serving the Lord. God is calling you out of the crowd to use you the way you are. After all, God knew you before you were born. God knows everything about you. Before the foundations of the world were laid, 
God knew about you. Your life was already in order. So when you give out excuses, then what are you telling God? God says, I know you. Before you were born, Jeremiah was told, don't tell me that you are too young. Don't tell me that you are, you are not able. I, know, I knew you before you were born. And God is telling you this morning, I knew you before you were born. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, Jeremiah 157. Brethren, God is calling us to serve him. Come the way you are. I've not told you to try and style up. Mm -mm. I want you the way you are. I am the one who is going to do something. I am going to work out something. I am going to work with you. I am going to form you. I am going to process you until you become. Are you willing? Why do people refuse God's call? Why do people give so many excuses? Number one is fear. Fear of the unknown. You are so fearful, you are not sure whether God is really going to take you through. And because of fear, you hold back. Another reason is procrastination. I will do it tomorrow. I will do it next time. I am not ready today. That delays God's call. Another thing is pride. You are too proud. What can God offer? After all, I am okay. I think I am well placed in the society. Why should I waste time? Another thing is mistrust. You don't trust God. Sometimes some people, they, they just don't trust God. They don't even want to ask things. At least God says, let me have what you are asking. Let me have what you're keeping. And another thing is comparison. Comparison also has been a great barrier to some of us. God is calling you and says, come, I want to use you the way you are. I like you the way you are. I have appointed you the way you are. I want you because you are weak. I want you because you are willing. I want you because you are valuable. What do you have to say about God's calling? My prayer is that you are going to think about what I have said. You are going to consider. You are going to take a, a brave step. You are going to say, God, here I am, use me. Because God knows what is good for him. God does not just pick anything. God knows what is good for him. Let us pray. Father, I thank you and I bless you. I have spoken your word with boldness. I have persuaded your people that you are God and there is none besides you. I want to pray, my heavenly Father, that you will be able, Holy Spirit, to continue persuading your people. Lord, I want to bind and destroy every excuses that has held back your people. I lose them. I pray for the courage of Joshua to be upon them. Let them be of good courage. Let them trust you in the name of Jesus. Let them walk in the walk of faith, knowing that God is faithful. Thank you, my master. Amen. Thank you so much for finding time to listen to this audio message. Please subscribe. Go to YouTube and subscribe and share this message with others so that they can equally be blessed. God bless you.